I am sitting on a train and leaving Beijing. The train rides 303 kilometers per hour towards Shanghai, towards the south, towards warmth, life and liberation. I am escaping Beijing and all that it has contained for the past six days. The past four months, I have had three throat infections and taken antibiotics for a total of 35 days. But during the last month in Europe, I felt that my throat was finally recovering. There is so much pollution in Beijing, so many cars and traffic, chaos everywhere. When flying over Beijing, you will not be able to see the city as you can in Sao Paulo or New York. In order to see this city or landscape, you will first have to cross a dense and thick layer of pollution. Beijing is a city that has vastly expanded over the past 20 years. The city has grown enormously, acquired six ring roads and around 5 million cars. The ring roads are square shaped, just to make sure that you don't get lost. Round heaven and square earth. Circle symbolizes heaven, square symbolizes earth, or why not, purgatory. Crossing the street in Beijing, I knew that my life was hanging by a thin thread. Every step that I took was accompanied by a huge risk. An accident could happen and I could be one of several victims. When crossing, I secured myself that there were at least two Chinese on either side of me. In that case, I would at least be protected by human flesh if something were to crash into us pedestrians. Drinking tea, putting on all the clothes that I had taken with me, keeping my mouth shut when outside, washing hands every hour, taking morphine pills that I had acquired from my mother's medicine drawer. Nothing worked. My throat got worse every day. The third day of my stay in China, I woke up with fever and no voice at all. No talking, no laughing, panic.
one of my teachers, who is Chinese herself, took me to a hospital. The China-Japan Friendship Hospital. There, I talked with a doctor who was very good, although he had a very different way of diagnosing my condition. He asked me to make a high tone, which of course I couldn't, so the sound that I produced sounded terrible. The diagnosis was focal cord infection. Then he sent me to a nurse. The nurse put an old-fashioned rubber band tightly around my arm and inserted a huge needle into my vein. It resembled a heroin injection scene from a 70s movie, only that in this case there was a tough-looking nurse with a World War II nursing uniform who was luckily not inserting heroin but taking blood. The result, however, was a bruise with a diameter of three centimeters, which stayed with me for three days. The doctor prescribed me antibiotics, which I was to take during five days. They worked great. Physical sickness was also accompanied by mental weakness. Each day I got more and more nervous and anxious to leave Beijing. A friend told me about a bunch of gossip, jealousy and going behind my back drama. In short, girls psychologically manipulating each other as usual. That didn't exactly make me feel better. I decided to try to leave Beijing and go to Shanghai by train. The last day in Beijing I called my parents, desperate, crying, totally broken down. This morning I took the subway to the train station. The Beijing subway is also life-threatening. So many people, guillotine doors that they certainly could cut off or paralyze your body parts. No fresh air, suffocation. When you try to exit the subway, you have to walk with a thousand other people, all in the same slow rhythm. I felt like one of the workers in Metropolis. Finally, after numerous ticket controls and metal detectors, I sat down in the train. And then, the train started moving. I am feeling great, excited and full of newly acquired energy. For all you know, I could have won a scholarship and received a grant of 1,500 euros.
The landscape near Beijing seems like death. Nature is lifeless, flat, dried out, sad, and frequented by skyscraper cities, which seem to be deserted, or maybe inhabited by dead people. Who cares? As further away as we get from Beijing, the greener, warmer, and the more varied the landscape becomes.